and with great difficulty I took a courage. I said, at the most they may say no, let me try. And my first book was published in 1979. I, today I feel I wish I should have probably 25 today. There are so many good publishers and I would have really gone immediately to one. I don't know the recommendation. It's nice to be recognized. You know, whatever said and done, people say, oh, I'm not attached to recognition, I'm not attached to any material things, oh, any award will not make a difference. We will talk all those things. But when it really comes to recognition, and that is true from your own people, that is, please underline, that is true from your own people, it always gives a sense of happiness. At least, I have enjoyed it. When Government of Karnataka gave me a Timabbe award, I said, this award is very, very important to me, more than Infosys prize, stock prize. <laughs> By the position of Narayan Murthy's wife, I might get some money, but creativity or the writing book is independent of whose wife, whose daughter, whose mother I am. It is born within me. It is born within me and I think the only reason I can give a logical reason why I do I write is I think Goddess Saraswati is kind to me. There is no other logical answer for me. I'm sure the Saraswati Bhaktas are all here today and everyone she has blessed and it's a great occasion to come. Actually, I was thinking, you have chosen, uh, Shri you have chosen a wrong person here, you know, in a, round, in a square hole, a round peg, because I'm so ordinary writer and uh, I'm a writer with a common person. Actually, I write for common people, I connect with them and I write my experience. I'm not a great writer or I'm not a high standard writer, I'm a very ordinary writer with ordinary people, tell the stories of ordinary person and I, and I understand their heart and their agony and their happiness through my work and that has given me a big canvas to write and that made me a writer. I thank all those people who gave me inspiration to write and share my knowledge with them through the form of books and I wish everyone all the best. Thank you very much. Delighting us with all you said, and I'm sure you'll remember that for a while, a long while. You know, Edward Gibbon wrote this monumental tome called The Decline uh, and Fall of the Roman Empire, and when he presented this to the Duke of Northumberland, he encountered a rather strange reaction. Looking at this monumental book before him, the Duke looked at him in disdain and said, Scribble, 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 eh, Mr. Gibbon? Let me assure you, today's Economist Crossword Book Award winners are assessed more kindly. <laughs> They're assessed by an independent panel of judges consisting of academics, critics, and authors whose books have not been entered in the awards. <laughs> the jury members in the Indian language translation category are C.S. Lakshmi, Ambai is a historian and creative writer who writes in Tamil, but her real name is C.S. Lakshmi, in fact, Dr. C.S. Lakshmi, and she shared the crossword award for translated fiction in 2007. She was awarded the Lifetime Literary Achievement Award of the Tamil Literary Garden by the University of Toronto in 2008, and she's currently director of Sparrow, which stands for Sound and Picture Archives for Research on women. Uh, could you please come on stage as your names are called? Um, our next um, jury member is C.S. Lakshmi. Please welcome. Our next jury member is Rita Kuttari, who is a well known translator, academic, and columnist from Gujarat. She is the author of Translating India, The Burden of Refuge and Chaktifying English. Rita Kothari is a recipient of several awards and fellowships and currently is at IIT Gandhinagar. Please welcome Rita Kothari. Finally, we have Supriya Chaudhary, who is an internationally reputed Bengali Indian scholar of English literature. She's a professor at Kolkata's Jadapur University and she's in charge of the UGC-funded research program 
of the university's English department and specializes most interestingly in the history of ideas. Now I invite them all to present certificates to the shortlisted authors who are asked to come up on stage. Uh, and the nominees, um, these are the shortlisted nominees for the Econ Economist Crossword Indian Language Translation Award 2011. Uh, could they also please come on stage uh, to collect their certificates as I call their name. The nominees in this translation category are In Freedom's Shade, written by Anish Kidwai, translated by Aisha Kidwai. Penguin Box India. is the color of longing written by K.R. Meera translated by J. Devika Penguin Books India If the authors are not here then the representative publishers can collect the award on their behalf This is Yellow is the color of longing written by K.R. Meera translated by J. Devika Then we have 17 written by Anita Agnihotri and translated by Arunava Sinha, Zuban Books. 17. Then we have the story of felony, written by Arupa Patangia Kalita, and translated by Deepika Pugan, again Zuban Books. This is for the story of felony written by Arupa Patangia Kalita, translated by Deepika Pugan, Zuban Books. The Araya Women, written by R. Narayan, translated by Catherine Thankama, Oxford University Press. The Araya Women, written by R. Narayan, translated by Catherine Thankama. Thank you very, very much. I now call on Sumaya Chaudhary to speak about the evaluation procedures used in judging the Indian language translation category.